The Arts of the Nineteenth Century in Europe The arts in Europe during the nineteenth century can be categorized into three distinct periods. The first period spans from the late eighteenth century to approximately 1850. It is characterized by the dominance of the Romantic movement and one of its manifestations, Neoclassicism. The second period includes the years between 1850 and 1886, during which the movements of realism and impressionism emerged and flourished. The third period covers the final 15 years of the 19th century. It witnessed the rise of movements such as neo-impressionism, symbolism, and art nouveau, introducing a new pluralism in artistic expression. Realism. Realism emerged as a prominent style during the 17th century in European painting, particularly within the Baroque era. Notably, Spanish and Dutch painters skillfully depicted scenes from everyday life. Moving forward to the mid-19th century, French painting witnessed two distinct trends. The first trend, known as academic painting, focused on presenting realistic portrayals of mythological and historical scenes. Artists embraced this style, capturing the essence of these subjects with great attention to detail. The second trend, commonly referred to as naturalism, involved artists who chose to depict landscapes and various themes inspired by nature, including the lives of farmers and scenes from daily life. This movement marked a departure from the traditional subjects, reflecting a deep appreciation for the natural world. Landscape painting, in particular, emerged as a novel form of artistic expression in France. A group of painters relocated from Paris to Barbizon, a village situated on the outskirts of the Fontainebleau forest, to immerse themselves in the beauty of nature. They began by creating initial sketches outdoors and later refined them in their studios. Renowned artists associated with this tendency included Jean-Francois Millet, Jean-Baptiste Camille Corot, and Gustave Courbet. Their contributions to the field of landscape painting helped shape and define this artistic movement. Jean-Francois Millet Jean-Francois Millet, 1814-1875, was a renowned French painter, who played a significant role in the development of the realism movement and was one of the founders of the Barbizon School. Born in Greville, a coastal village in Normandy, France, Jean-Francois Millet grew up in a farming family, and initially pursued agricultural work before embarking on his career as a painter. His artistic creations prominently reflect the agricultural world, showcasing the natural landscapes of his birthplace and depicting the daily lives of peasants. His works captured the hardships and dignity of the working class, presenting a realistic and compassionate portrayal of their everyday existence. One of the artist's most famous paintings is The Gleaners, which depicts three women leaning over to gather leftover grain after the harvest. This painting is often interpreted as a symbol of the importance of labor, rural life, and the working class. His artistic style was defined by his exceptional depiction of light and shadow, attention to detail, and the use for earthy tones. He had a deep appreciation for the beauty found in simplicity and sought to convey the inherent dignity of labor. Jean-Francois Millet left a lasting impact on renowned artists such as Vincent van Gogh, Claude Monet, and Georges Seurat, who drew inspiration from his work. Jean-Francois Millet The Gleaners the painting was created in 1857 and is housed in the Orsay Museum in Paris. It depicts three female figures diligently engaged in the act of gleaning, 
which involves gathering leftover crops from a field after the main harvest. Gleaning was a practice in which the poor and less fortunate would gather the remaining bits of crops that were missed during the initial harvest. This act of gleaning was often seen as a symbol of poverty and the struggle for survival in the rural working class. The women's faces are absent from the picture, while their bodies move with slow and laborious gestures, symbolizing the daily toil of farmers. The artist accentuates their attire and movements, using bold outlines that contrast against the backdrop of a vibrant, sunlit plain. Jean-Francois Millet's intention was to honor the hard work and resilience of peasant farmers. He wanted to shed light on the often overlooked individuals who performed this essential task to support their livelihoods. With its realist style, the Gleaners showcases attention to detail and an honest portrayal of the working class. The use of earthy tones harmoniously integrates the figures with the landscape. Consequently, the painting has become an iconic representation of the harsh work and the dignity of labor. The painting's impact extended beyond its artistic merits. It served as a commentary on the socio-economic conditions of rural France during the 19th century, a time of significant industrialization and urbanization. The Gleaners highlighted the inequalities between the wealthy landowners and the struggling agricultural laborers. Jean-Baptiste Camille Corot Jean-Baptiste Camille Corot 1796-1875 was a French painter renowned for his exceptional landscapes. During his early years, Corot received classical landscape painting training. He studied under notable artists, including Zan Victor Bertin, who familiarized him with the principles of composition and perspective. Corot began numerous sketching expeditions to the French countryside, refining his ability for capturing the essence of nature. Corot's artistic style was characterized by his ability to create his landscapes with a deep sense of nostalgia and serenity. Through the use of soft brush strokes and subtle hues, he frequently portrayed picturesque scenes that evoked a dreamlike ambience. Drawing inspiration from Italian painters, Corot incorporated warmth and luminosity into his creations, resulting in a perfect harmonious balance between light and shadow. Although Koro initially followed the neoclassical tradition, he became a precursor to the Impressionist movement. His emphasis on capturing the fleeting effects of light and atmosphere, as well as his loose brushwork, were techniques applied later by the Impressionists. Koro influenced artists like Claude Monet, Pierre-Auguste Renoir, and Camille Pissarro. They recognized the profound impact he had on their artistic development and drew inspiration from Corot's masterful renderings of nature. Jean-Baptiste Camille Corot A Morning, The Dance of the Nymphs Created in 1850, this painting currently is housed in the Orsay Museum located in Paris. It is a significant work that exemplifies Corot's exploration of mythological subjects and his artistic style. The painting transports viewers to a serene and idyllic setting, likely inspired by classical mythology. In this enchanting scene, nymphs, ethereal beings from ancient Greek mythology, engage in a graceful dance amidst a tranquil landscape. Koro skillfully captures the play of light and shadow, infusing the scene with a soft, luminous quality that heightens its dreamlike atmosphere. A morning, the dance of the nymphs showcases Koro's ability to blend elements of fantasy and reality. The composition, with its careful attention to detail, portrays the nymphs moving gracefully through a wooded area, 
evoking a sense of harmony between humans and nature. Corot's use of color and brushwork gives to the painting a poetic quality, inviting viewers to immerse themselves in the magical realm he has created. This painting distincts from traditional mythological depictions or historical events, as it focuses on the beauty of the natural world and the harmonious interaction between the nymphs and their surroundings. This artwork signifies the shift from classical subjects to a more naturalistic approach prevalent in 19th century painting. Gustave Courbet Gustave Courbet, 1819-1877, was born in the small village of Ornans in northeastern France and was one of the most imposing figures in 19th-century French art. Renowned for his realistic approach, Courbet not only introduced a new artistic trend but also became an inspiration for the Impressionistic movement, advocating for the creative freedom of artists. One of Courbet's significant contributions was his emphasis on the portrayal of ordinary people and their lived experiences. He believed in giving voice to the working class and shedding light on their struggles and hardships. Through his paintings, he sought to challenge the social and political norms of the time. However, his realistic depiction of subjects that were often considered vulgar or inappropriate by society's standards led to several scandals. His painting The Origin of the World, a provocative and explicit depiction of the female genitalia, is a prime example of his willingness to challenge societal norms. Courbet's artistic approach was characterized by his commitment to depicting reality as it is, often capturing scenes from everyday life, landscapes and portraits with honesty and precision to detail. He rejected the conventions of academic art and his vision was to capture nature in its true essence, supporting that the contemporary artist should rely on his own experience to be realistic. Courbet once said, I can't paint an angel because I never saw anyone. Gustave Courbet. Burial at Ornans. The Orsay Museum in Paris houses a significant painting created in 1850. It marked Courbet's emergence as the leading representative of realism in art. The painting depicts a funeral scene in the artist's hometown of Ornans, France. It portrays the burial ceremony of Courbet's great uncle capturing the solemnity and gravity of the occasion. The composition of the painting is both plain and impressive, emphasizing Courbet's commitment to representing reality as it is. One notable aspect of burial at Ornans is Courbet's deviation from traditional artistic subjects. Rather than focusing on grand historical or mythological themes, he chose to portray an ordinary event the funeral of an ordinary person. This choice challenged the prevailing artistic conventions of the period. The painting showcases a group of mourners, each depicted with individuality and authenticity. Courbet used his friends and relatives as models, giving to the artwork a sense of familiarity and genuine emotion. Notably, the three weeping women in the foreground are Courbet's sisters, adding a personal touch to the scene. The composition captures a range of human emotions and reactions to death. Some mourners display deep grief and sorrow, while others appear indifferent or detached. Also, some mourners are depicted in a caricature-like manner. The nuanced portrayal of human behavior contributes to the painting's realism, presenting a truthful depiction of a funeral procession. This painting challenged the established norms of the art world, emphasizing the importance of representing everyday life and ordinary people. This marked a significant shift towards realism as an artistic movement, influencing subsequent generations of artists.
Gustave Courbet. Bonjour Monsieur Courbet. The painting was created in 1854 and can be found at the Fabre Museum in Montpellier. Positioned on the right side of the painting is the artist himself, strolling through the countryside with his tools packed away in a backpack. On the left side of the painting, two men are shown bowing or greeting him, while the rest of the scene portrays a serene landscape. The composition suggests a casual encounter between the artist and his friends. The scene has a sense of warmth and familiarity. One of the notable aspects of Bonjour Monsieur Courbet is the portrayal of the artist's self-image. Courbet presents himself dressed in simple clothing. This deliberate choice aligns with his artistic philosophy, which supports the idea of artistic freedom and authenticity. Courbet emphasizes the importance of personal expression and rejects the conventions of the art establishment of his time. The painting itself captures a moment of casual encounter and offers a glimpse into the artist's life and relationships. It exemplifies Courbet's realist approach, which aimed to represent everyday scenes and ordinary people. By choosing a subject that is devoid of grand narratives or historical events, Courbet brings attention to the significance of the reality. Impressionism During the latter half of the 19th century, the evolution of European painting was greatly influenced by two important factors, the discovery of photography and the emergence of Japanese color engravings. Initially, photography was used for portraits. The portable cameras and the ability to capture instant photographs occurred later, at a time when the Impressionist movement was becoming popular. The concept of instant photography deeply influenced painters, as they sought to convey the fleeting impression of a particular moment. As a result, artists embarked on a quest to explore new routes and spaces of artistic expression. Around 1850, Japanese engravings gained recognition in Europe through the wrapping papers used for merchandise imported from the East. Renowned Japanese artists like Ando Hiroshige, Katsushika Hokusai, and Kitagawa Yutamaro were the creators of these engravings. Their artwork exemplified the artistic style known as Yukio-e in Japan, which translates to pictures of the floating world or images of the world or the life that flows. The Impressionists were among the first to appreciate the value of these engravings, and their influence extended to the works of Van Gogh and Gauguin. The two-dimensional levels, vibrant colors, and expressive designs of Japanese engravings aided the artists in breaking away from traditional European conventions and discovering unexpected depictions of life. These engravings typically portrayed various subjects such as natural landscapes, theatrical scenes, actors, and similar themes. Impressionism took place around 1874, with the first exhibition of this artistic movement. Among the participants, an unknown painter named Claude Monet showcased a series of landscape paintings titled Impressions. The title had significant acclaim, leading the artists to adopt it for their subsequent exhibition in 1877. Consequently, Impressionism emerged as one of the most successful painting styles in art history. Diverging from the landscape painters of the Barbizon school, the Impressionists commenced and completed their artworks outdoors, on plein air. In contrast to the paintings of the Romanticism or Realism periods, the works of the Impressionists appeared remarkably vibrant, as if they were made with bright hues. In their compositions the air circulates, and the light penetrates everywhere, even in the shadows, illuminating every element. 
The subjects explored by the Impressionists included landscapes, capturing the sea and countryside around Paris, as well as everyday city life, including traffic, entertainment, roads, railways, and train stations. The main representatives of Impressionism are Edouard Manet, Claude Monet, Auguste Renoir, Camille Pissarro, Gustave Caibort, and Edgar Degas. Edouard Manet Edouard Manet, 1832-1883, marked the beginning of modern painting, characterized by its freedom from artistic conventions. By studying the ideas of Courbet along with other Impressionist painters, they questioned the fundamental principles of their art. Previously, students at the Academy of Fine Arts were taught to meticulously apply colors in their compositions within the controlled environment of the studio, aiming to create the illusion of light and shadow. However, this approach resulted in unrealistic representations as it failed to capture the nuances of light in natural settings. Manet, in contrast, broke away from traditional methods by reproducing his work outdoors and abandoning the smooth progression of colors. Instead, he employed bold and harsh contrasts that were met with disapproval from conservative artists and the general public. One of Manet's most famous and controversial paintings is Olympia, 1863. This painting depicted a reclining nude woman, with a contemporary approach. The painting caused a scandal when it was exhibited at the Salon. Olympia challenged traditional representations of the female nude and marked a departure from established artistic conventions. This disapproval was evident at the official Salon of 1863, where Manet and fellow artists were prohibited from showcasing their work. One of the rejected projects that made its appearance at the Salon of the Rejected was Luncheon on the Grass. Manet's artistic style and choice of subject matter challenged the established norms of the traditional art world. He aimed to capture the essence of contemporary life and present it from a fresh perspective. His paintings often depicted scenes from urban Parisian life, café, culture, and leisure activities. Characterized by loose brushwork, bold compositions, and a departure from the idealized portrayals prevalent in academic art, Manet's works defied conventions. Manet played a significant role in the transition from realism to Impressionism. Edouard Manet. Luncheon on the Grass. This painting, created in 1863, can be found in the Orsay Museum, in Paris. The artwork is considered as one of Manet's most influential and controversial pieces, defying the prevailing artistic conventions of its time. It portrays two couples in a green landscape enjoying a picnic together in the countryside. A striking feature of the painting is the prominent position of a nude female figure in the foreground, who captivates the viewer with her direct gaze. She is accompanied by two elegantly dressed gentlemen. The deliberate placement of the nude female figure amidst the clothed men serves as a provocative and unconventional choice, challenging the societal norms and expectations of that era. In the background, we can observe another lightly dressed girl. At the bottom of the composition we notice a fruit basket resting on the woman's dress. Further away, remnants of breakfast such as bread, fruits, and a bottle are visible. The identities of the faces are familiar, as the woman served as a frequent model for the artist, while the men were none other than Manet's brother and brother-in-law. Within the depiction of the nude female form, one can observe a striking contrast between the warm tones of the flesh and the cold grey hues of the men's attire. The painter deliberately eliminates colour gradients, 
transitioning directly from light to shadow. This approach aligns with the aesthetics of Japanese engraving, resulting in a two-dimensional quality to the painting. The painting was rejected by the French Salon and faced harsh criticism. Its unconventional composition, provocative content, and departure from traditional artistic techniques were met with disdain, as many deemed it morally offensive. Essentially, the painting serves as a manifesto, declaring the artist's freedom to combine various elements in order to achieve a purely aesthetic effect. The concept that a work of art possesses its own set of laws, distinct from those governing everyday life, played a crucial role in shaping the course of modern painting movements. Edouard Manet The Balcony Created approximately between 1868 and 1869, this painting currently can be found in the Orsay Museum in Paris. The artwork depicts several figures, each with their own significance and connection to the artist. Notably, the female figure seated on the balcony is none other than the painter Berta Morisot, who married Manet's brother, Eugene. Positioned on the right is Fanny Claus, a close friend of Manet and a talented violinist. In the center and towards the back, there is a well-dressed man identified as the painter Jean-Baptiste Antoine Guillemet. Additionally, a young boy believed to be Manet's son, Leon, can be seen within the interior, positioned behind the painter. The figures seem disconnected from one another, lost in their own thoughts. This evokes a sense of mystery and invites viewers to interpret the relationships and dynamics among the individuals depicted. Manet uses a restrained color palette, primarily consisting of white, green, and black, with splashes of blue seen in Guillemet's tie and touches of red evident in Morisot's fan. The theme of the painting draws inspiration from an earlier work by Goya, Mahas on a balcony. However, unlike Goya, Manet's portrayal of the female forms appears flattened. Nevertheless, despite the seemingly flat depiction of the figures, the overall composition conveys a sense of depth. This striking effect is achieved, in part, through the vibrant depiction of a green railing, which horizontally intersects the composition, Define traditional rules of color harmony. Edouard Manet Claude Monet and his boat The new art gallery of Munich houses this painting created by Edouard Manet in 1847. In this artwork, Manet portrays Claude Monet, the renowned Impressionist artist accompanied by his wife, while situated in a boat. This boat serves as Monet's impromptu studio. Claude Monet held the belief that artists should start and finish their paintings outdoors. Monet believed that capturing the true essence of nature required working directly in its presence, embracing the ever-changing light, colors, and atmospheric conditions. He often used boats as his mobile studios, allowing him to navigate different locations and find inspiration in various landscapes. In a gesture to honor Monet's adherence to this philosophy, Manet depicted him in his open-air studio. In the painting, the shapes are at the first level, and within the brilliance of the atmosphere, they acquire volume through color, rather than outlines. Through his brushwork and color choices, Manet creates a vibrant and lively scene, inviting viewers to experience the artistic process and the beauty of the outdoor surroundings. Edouard Manet Portrait of Émile Zola This painting, created in 1868 by Edouard Manet, is currently housed in the Orsay Museum in Paris. 
The painting is a portrayal of Emile Zola, a prominent French writer and leading figure in the literary movement of naturalism. He is depicted seated on a chair with a serious contemplative expression and holding a book. Zola was a cherished friend and supporter of Manet's artistic endeavors. Interestingly, the true focus of the artwork is not solely the writer's personality, but rather the celebration of their friendship, evident through the objects within the room. In the background, in the upper section of the painting we notice Manet's painting titled Olympia and a drawing of Bacchus by Velázquez. Additionally, a Japanese image catches the eye, accompanied by a Japanese engraving by Utagawa Kuniaki. This fusion of Eastern and Western artistic influences was characteristic of Manet's style and contributed to the painting's avant-garde appeal. Edouard Manet. The Railroad. This artwork was created in 1873 and currently can be found in the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C. The painting portrays a scene outside the St. Lazare train station in Paris. At the center of the composition, a woman named Victorine Meur, who frequently modeled for Manet, and can also be recognized in other notable works such as Luncheon on the Grass and Olympia. She is depicted sitting in front of the station, holding a small dog and a book in her lap, giving us the impression that her attention momentarily diverted from her reading. Her expression appears entirely natural, as if she lifted her gaze from the book, conveying a slight hint of annoyance at being interrupted. Another figure of the painting is the presence of a young girl standing beside the seated woman. This girl, identified as the daughter of the painter and his friend Alphonse Hirsch, has her back turned to the viewer. She is depicted observing the trains passing by behind the railings of the station, indicated by the trailing smoke left in their wake. The dominant colors are various shades of blue and white, which contribute to the overall atmosphere and aesthetic of the composition. The painting is known for its naturalistic depiction of the figures and their surroundings, showcasing Manet's skill in capturing everyday scenes of the modern city life with a touch of realism. Edouard Manet A Bar at the Folie Bergère the Court Lord Gallery in London is home to a remarkable painting created in 1882. This captivating artwork offers a glimpse into the vibrant Parisian modern life of the 19th century, specifically set within the city's renowned bar. The central focus of the painting is a young barmaid standing behind a marble countertop. A flower adorns the beautiful barmaid's neckline. Upon the countertop, an arrangement of items catches the eye. To the left, bottles of champagne stand alongside a vase of flowers, while to the right, a bowl of clementines and bottles of beer can be seen. Manet's masterful brushstrokes bring life to the prominent figures, objects, and the interior, paying meticulous attention to detail. The diagonal lines of the countertop and the mirror draw the viewer's eye into the painting, while the reflections in the mirror creates a sense of depth and perspective. The barmaid's stare is directed towards us, with an almost unexplainable expression. It's as if she's patiently listening or waiting for our response. Behind her, a large mirror with an ornate golden frame reflects the bustling atmosphere of the surroundings. Within its glassy surface, we catch a glimpse of a performer balancing on a trapeze in the top left corner, a cheerful audience, and a man engaged in conversation with the barmaid at the top right corner. Though the client remains unseen in front of the mirror, his face is reflected within it, creating the illusion that the viewer is engaged in conversation with the young woman. 
Edward Manet's exceptional artistry skillfully captures the vibrant ambience, conveying the radiant lights, and cheerful atmosphere of the place. The composition demonstrates the artist's departure from traditional academic techniques and his inclination towards a more modern and innovative style. With a loose brushwork and a more naturalistic approach, which was considered revolutionary at the time, he laid the foundation for the Impressionist movement. Claude Monet. Claude Oscar Monet, 1840-1926, was a renowned French painter and a pioneering figure in Impressionist art, playing a significant role in shaping 20th century modernism. Born in Paris, Monet later relocated with his family to Havre in Normandy, where his father worked as a wholesale merchant. During his time in Normandy, Monet had the valuable opportunity to study under the guidance of Eugène Boudin, who introduced him to plan air painting, the technique of capturing outdoor scenes. Additionally, Monet pursued his studies at the Académie Suisse in Paris, and befriended fellow artists such as Camille Pissarro and Pierre-Auguste Renoir. In the late 1860s, Monet, along with other artists, diverged from the traditional style of painting and formed the Impressionist movement. They sought to depict their personal impressions of a scene rather than focusing on precise details. Monet's groundbreaking masterpiece, Impression, Sunrise, exhibited in 1874, played an important role in adopting the term Impressionism. In 1883, Monet made a permanent move with his family to the countryside, where he purchased a property and meticulously designed its surrounding landscape, featuring exquisite gardens, flourishing trees, and a picturesque water lily pond. For the last two decades of his life, he produced awe-inspiring paintings of his beloved garden in Giverny. He had a deep connection with nature and often painted on plein air, working directly from outdoor scenes to capture the changing light and atmospheric conditions. While Monet followed the traditions of the Barbizon school and predominantly painted on plein air, it is worth noting that he often completed his artworks in his studio, particularly when working on large-scale canvases. Monet's paintings demonstrate his constant pursuit of capturing the fleeting effects of sunlight on the natural scenery, showcasing his deep fascination with the ever-changing play of light and shadow. Claude Monet Impression, Sunrise Created in 1872, Impression, Sunrise is a renowned painting by Claude Monet and is housed at the Marmiton Monet Museum in Paris. It holds significant importance as one of the defining works that gave birth to the Impressionist movement. The painting depicts the harbour of Le Havre, France, during the break of dawn. Monet's distinctive brushwork and emphasis on capturing the effect of light and color make this artwork a remarkable example of his artistic style. Rather than focusing on precise details, Monet aimed to convey his personal impression of the scene. The composition portrays a serene harbor scene with boats, masts, and buildings emerging from the misty surroundings. The focal point of the composition is the sun ascending above the cranes, tanks, and masts of the docked ships. The color palette predominantly consists of cool and subdued tones, including soft blues, grays, and purples. However, the vibrant oranges and yellows used to depict the rising sun create a striking contrast against the cooler hues. When the artwork was exhibited in 1874 at the first Impressionist exhibition in Paris, a critic used the term to describe Monet's style, which later became synonymous with the entire movement. 
The painting has had a profound impact on the development of modern art and continues to be celebrated as a timeless masterpiece. Claude Monet Bar Saint Lazare The painting, created in 1877, currently resides in the Orsay Museum situated in Paris. It belongs to a series of artworks where Monet focused on capturing the atmospheric effects found in various train stations in Paris. This specific piece depicts the interior of the bustling Gare Saint-Lazare, one of the city's busiest railway stations during that era. Monet was drawn to the station's unique atmosphere, which offered a modern and industrial subject matter, something that was becoming increasingly prevalent during the Industrial Revolution. Throughout the series, Monet explored different angles, perspectives, and lighting conditions within the train station. This experimentation allowed him to study how light played upon the steam, the architecture, and the people, creating a sense of visual dynamism and a transient atmosphere. The repetitive subject of the station allowed Monet to analyze the variations in color and light as they changed throughout the day and under different weather conditions. Monet's approach deviates from the representation of the station itself. Instead, he sought to convey the interplay of light and steam within the space, evoking an ethereal ambience. The painting showcases the captivating play of light streaming through the station's glass roof, blending with steam clouds and casting soft, shadows. The artist used loose, impressionistic brushstrokes that give to the scene a sense of movement and immediacy. This meticulously composed artwork exudes a warm color palette, predominantly featuring hues of blue, pink, violet, gray, white, black, and yellow. Even in the portrayal of the smoke, these colors maintain a dark and gentle quality, resulting in an overall harmonious composition. The Gar Saint Lazare series is just one example of Monet's dedication to capturing the essence of modern life through his Impressionist style. It also highlights his fascination with light and its ability to transform ordinary scenes into vibrant and amazing artworks. Claude Monet Poppy Field The Orsay Museum in Paris houses a renowned painting created by Monet in 1873. Widely celebrated as one of the artist's masterpieces, this painting was created during Monet's stay in Argentoy, suburb of Paris. The painting showcases Monet's unique ability in capturing the fleeting effects of light, color, and atmosphere in the natural world. At the forefront of the painting, a vibrant field of poppies dominates the scene, while Monet's wife Camille and their son Zan take center stage. A charming detail is Zan holding a handful of these vibrant flowers while following his mother, who gracefully holds a parasol. The composition follows a diagonal line, guiding the viewer's gaze from the lower left corner to the upper right corner, giving to the piece a sense of motion and depth. Towards the back and atop the meadow, another woman with a child prepares to cross the field. There is no evident connection between the two pairs of figures. The artist's exceptional skill in capturing the natural landscape astounds viewers. Monet used two distinct color zones in this artwork. The intense red hues of the poppies stand in contrast to the cool blue-green tones that pervade the meadow and surrounding landscape. This selection of complementary colors adds dynamism to the composition and creates a harmonious visual impact. Furthermore, the painting captures the gentle rustling of the wind in the background trees and the poppy-filled field. 
It portrays a serene and ordinary yet delightful scene amidst the countryside's heart. Instead of precise and detailed strokes, Monet opted a loose and rapid brushwork, capturing the essence of the scene rather than focusing on details. This technique allows viewers to engage with the painting from a distance, where the individual brushstrokes blend together to form this atmospheric composition. The interplay of light and shadow, as well as the subtle variations in color and texture, depicts the ever-changing conditions of the environment. Claude Monet Women in the Garden This renowned painting by Claude Monet was created in 1866 and can be found at the Orsay Museum in Paris. The painter's intention was to showcase the impact of natural outdoor light on art, contrasting it with the artificial lighting within a studio. The artwork portrays women amidst a lush garden. Interestingly, all four women depicted in the painting are actually representations of the artist's future wife, Camille Doncieux. Camille was a frequent model for Monet. The painting challenged the conventional methods of art, created in a controlled studio environment. Monet successfully accomplishes this goal by meticulously examining the behavior of sunlight in the depicted scene and its impact on the surroundings. We can observe the sun's rays penetrating through the tree foliage, casting warm tones on the model's clothing, flesh, and the garden path. Notably, the striped dress worn by Camille showcases vibrant hues, contrary to the traditional academic norms that dictated black or grey shades. Monet skillfully captures the interplay of light and shadow, created by the sun's rays passing through the trees, in Camille's dress. It is in this dress that we can truly appreciate the artist's mastery in depicting the contrasts brought forth by natural light. This attention to the nuanced interplay between light and the environment is the key feature of Impressionism. Through loose brushwork and a vibrant color palette, Monet conveys the fleeting nature of the moment, giving to the painting the impression of spontaneity and movement. All four figures are depicted in relaxed poses, evoking a casual atmosphere and capturing that moment in time in this magnificent artwork. Claude Monet Woman with a Parasol, Madame Monet and Her Son Woman with a Parasol, Madame Monet and Her Son, also known as La Promenade, is a remarkable painting by Claude Monet. Completed in 1875, it can be found at the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C. The artwork depicts Monet's wife, Camille Doncieux, and their young son, taking a stroll in the countryside, likely in the region of Argentoy where the family resided. The painting beautifully portrays the harmonious blending of ordinary scenes with a sense of beauty and tranquility. At the center of the composition stands Camille, elegantly attired in a white dress, clutching a large parasol to shield herself from the sun. The parasol not only serves a practical purpose but also becomes a central element within the painting, generating a striking interplay of light and shadow on Camille's face and clothing, showcasing delicate variations in color and form. Camille's posture conveys a sense of movement and spontaneity, as if she has been called or startled by an unseen presence. The billowing of her dress and the gentle sway of the wildflowers in the breeze further enhance the perception of captured motion. Monet's brushwork captures these fleeting moments, immersing viewers in the essence of the scene. Due to the vivid light, the features of the woman's and child's faces remain indistinct. Monet's fascination with light itself is once again evident in this exquisite painting. 
The vibrant palette includes shades of blue, green, yellow, white, orange, and purple red. Through these colors, Monet evokes the impression of light and its transformative effects on the natural surroundings. Darker hues create shadows on the grass, while lighter tones capture the luminosity of the sky and clouds. Although Camille's dress is white, the painting exhibits an array of colors. For instance, near her left elbow, yellow tones reflect the radiance of the sun and the flowers on the grass, engaging in a playful dance of light and shadow. Monet's brushstrokes reflect the characteristic style of Impressionism, using loose and visible strokes that convey spontaneity and the play of light. Claude Monet Water Lilies, Nom Fayard These compositions of approximately 250 oil paintings, created by the painter between 1897 and 1926, can be found in several museums worldwide, including the Orangery Museum, the Marmiton Monet Museum, and the Orsay Museum in Paris, as well as other prominent art museums. They portray Monet's meticulously crafted natural landscape, inspired by his residence in Giverny, a small village near Paris. Over the course of three decades, the artist dedicated himself to painting the garden of his home. These exceptional works are widely regarded as some of the finest achievements of his career. Monet's fascination with the water lilies and his quest to capture the ever-changing interplay of light, color, and reflections inspired him to create these compositions. Using a loose brushwork, vibrant hues, and a focus on fleeting light effects, he transformed the garden into a subject of profound significance. An intriguing aspect of these artworks lies in the absence of conventional horizon lines and clear distinction between water and sky. By observing the lilies resting upon the water's surface, we witness the interplay of natural light upon them, giving rise to a multitude of colors and shimmering effects. Monet aimed to convey through these artworks the illusion of an infinite unity devoid of any visible horizon or shore. Hence, we can perceive his deliberate omission of the sky and the earth, as his exclusive focus remains fixated upon the water's surface. The paintings often feature clusters of water lilies in different stages of blooming, gracefully floating on the serene pond. The feeling of harmony and tranquility is transported to the viewer. Monet's artistic innovations led to the creation of a series of paintings that would go on to significantly influence numerous artists to explore abstract and non-representational forms of expression. Claude Monet The Water Lily Pond Green Harmony. This series consists of approximately 18 compositions centered around the painter's garden in Giverny. These artworks can be found in various museums worldwide. Specifically, this particular composition was created in 1899 and is currently housed in the Orsay Museum, located in Paris. This masterpiece showcases Monet's deep admiration for nature and his remarkable talent for capturing the interplay of light and color in outdoor settings. At the center of the composition, we can observe a Japanese wooden bridge that stretches across the pond. The bridge acts as connecting point between the lush green foliage at the top of the canvas with the tranquil surface of the water below. Monet skillfully captures the reflections of the bridge and surrounding vegetation on the water's surface, creating a sense of depth and tranquility. The pond itself is abundantly adorned with water lilies, which dominate the composition. 
Monet's keen eye for detail and color shines through as he portrays the delicate beauty of these flowers in various shades of white, pink, yellow, and blue. With his impressionistic style, characterized by quick brushstrokes and loose techniques, Monet gives to the scene a dynamic sense of movement and vitality. In the background, a dense foliage of trees blankets the sky, perfectly balancing the natural elements with the man-made elements of the painting. Monet's exceptional ability to capture the nuances of light is evident as he expertly depicts sunlight filtering through the foliage, casting captivating shadows. The overall scene is a harmonious and luminous composition, with the reflections of the trees and flowers mirrored on the serene surface of the lake. Pierre-Auguste Renoir Pierre-Auguste Renoir, 1841-1919, was an esteemed French painter associated with the Impressionist movement. Born in Limoges, Renoir's family relocated to Paris during his early years. Renoir received his artistic education at the School of Fine Arts, where he studied under the renowned Swiss painter Charles Glier. It was during this time that he developed friendships with fellow artists Claude Monet, Alfred Sisley, and Frédéric Bazzi. Renoir drew inspiration from the vibrant colors and light employed by Eugène Delacroix and Camille Corot. He was also influenced by the realism exhibited in the works of Gustave Courbet and Edouard Manet. His artistic journey led him to travel across Europe, studying the magnificent art of Diego Velázquez in Spain and observing the works of Renaissance painters Titian and Raphael in Italy. In collaboration with his friend Claude Monet, Renoir embraced outdoor painting, experimenting with capturing the interplay of light and shadow on objects, as well as the way colors appeared to reflect under luminous light. To achieve this, he employed the technique of broken brushstrokes, applying colors in small strokes to create a vibrant effect of natural light and movement. Renoir's paintings often portrayed scenes of everyday life, particularly focusing on the beauty of landscapes, still life, and portraits. He also aimed to depict the instantaneous joys and pleasures of people. Renoir was particularly skilled in capturing the luminosity and warmth of flesh tones, making his depictions of human figures truly captivating. One of his most renowned Impressionist works is the painting titled Dance at Le Moulin de la Galette. Pierre-Auguste Renoir Dance at Le Moulin de la Galette This painting, created in 1876, currently resides in the Orsay Museum located in Paris. It is widely recognized as one of the most renowned works of Impressionism. The artwork depicts a carefree Sunday afternoon at the Moulin de la Galette, popular dance hall situated in Montmartre, filled with dancing and laughter. The painting reflects the urban way of living of late 19th century Paris. Renoir skillfully captures the essence of movement and energy within the composition. The scene unfolds in the outdoor garden of the entertainment center, where young couples engage in lively conversations, dances, and flirtations, illuminated by alternating patches of light and shadow. The couples portrayed in the painting were close acquaintances of the artist, who used them as models. The artist's loose brushwork and emphasis on the interplay of light and color contribute to the unique impressionistic style of the artwork. Renoir masterfully depicts the filtered sunlight streaming through the foliage, casting playful shadows and infusing the scene with depth and ambience. Renoir's use of vibrant colors is another distinctive characteristic of the painting. He explores the interplay of warm and cool tones, 
using a rich palette to depict the various textures and fabrics of the people's clothing. The colors radiate life and vitality, further heightening the joyful and festive atmosphere of the Moulin de la Galette. While the painting primarily focuses on the detailed rendering of the faces on the foreground, the artist employs a freer style. Notably, the seated girl's eyes and forehead reside in the shade, while her mouth and chin are in the sunlight. With few and sparse brushstrokes, the artist renders the girl's striped dress. In the background, figures are depicted as if analyzed by the interplay of sunlight and air. The painter's primary interest lies in describing the vibrant fusion of colors and investigating the effects of sunlight on the bustling crowd. Renoir meticulously observes the play of light as it reflects between the trees and illuminates the clothing of the individuals. His intention is to capture the phenomenon of refraction, representing it through circular spots adorning the garments of the people. This composition remains a wonderful masterpiece of art, captivating viewers with its vivid colors, energy and joy. Pierre-Auguste Renoir La Loz The Courtauld Gallery in London houses this painting created in 1874. It portrays an elegant couple seated in a theatre box surrounded by other theatregoers. The theatre held a significant position in the entertainment preferences of the Parisian bourgeoisie and served as a favoured subject for numerous artists. In the foreground, our attention is drawn to a beautiful young woman named Nini Lopez, who is depicted lowering her binoculars and gazing towards the viewer. She wears a striking dress adorned with white and black stripes. Although the artist has loosely captured her features, many intricate details are present. Noteworthy elements include the jewelry around her neck, the earrings she wears, the delicate wrist of her hand, and the beautiful roses embellishing her dress and hair. Renoir's attention to detail showcases the artist's ability to capture the nuances of expression and gesture. In the background, Renoir's brother, Edmund, is seated. Rather than focusing on the stage performance, Edmund's attention is directed towards the other spectators, suggesting a social observation or engagement with the theatre atmosphere. The theatre was a significant social space where the rich and fashionable society gathered to see and be seen. Renoir captures this cultural phenomenon for demonstration by presenting a snapshot of a couple in their private box, emphasizing the social dynamics and interactions within the theatre. Renoir's mastery of light is evident in the way he illuminates the figures and their surroundings, giving the artwork depth and a sense of ambience. The painting exemplifies Renoir's ability to portray the fleeting moments of everyday life with an emphasis on light, color, and atmosphere. Auguste Renoir The Umbrellas This painting, located in the National Gallery in London, was created in two distinct phases. The initial phase, in 1881, involved the completion of the right side, while the background and shapes on the left were added in 1885. The painting showcases Renoir's ability of capturing scenes from everyday life with his loose brushwork and vibrant use of color. The composition is divided into two parts. On the left, a bustling city street is depicted during a rain shower, with people seeking shelter under open umbrellas. Renoir's loose brushstrokes and fluid lines portrays the movement of the scene, blending the figures and umbrellas harmoniously. On the right side of the painting, Renoir portrays a group of figures under large umbrellas. Here, the artist focuses on the interaction between the characters. 
The central figure is a young girl, her face turned towards the viewer. Renoir employs rapid brush strokes that seamlessly blend and softly spread, resulting in a warm and radiant appearance for the child. Among the surrounding figures are a woman dressed in a blue coat, possibly Suzanne Volodone, the French painter and a gentleman wearing a top hat. The young man, behind Volodone, can be seen leaning and holding an umbrella over her shoulder, offering her protection from the sudden downpour. Renoir's masterful handling of light is evident in the umbrellas. He skillfully captures the effects of light on various surfaces, such as the glistening streets, the reflective surfaces of the umbrellas, and the illuminated faces of the figures. The artist applied the paint with quick, visible strokes, allowing the viewer's eye to blend the colors optically. This technique creates a sense of movement, atmosphere, and fleeting impressions. The color palette predominantly consists of blues and grays, extending across the umbrellas as well as the coats and dresses of the people depicted. This emphasis on geometric shapes, along with bold brush strokes and the interplay of light and reflections, unveils a new facet of artistic expression. Notably, this painting serves as a prime example of the subsequent influence it had on the works of Paul Cézanne and the artistic movements of the 20th century. Auguste Renoir Luncheon of the Boating Party The artwork, currently housed at the Phillips Collection in Washington, D.C., was created in 1880-1881. It portrays a lively gathering of individuals enjoying a delightful lunch. Renoir's intention was to depict a pleasant atmosphere and to capture the essence of leisure and modern life. The painter utilized his close friends, fellow artists, art dealers, and his future wife, Alain Charago, as models. Notably, Alain Charago can be seen holding a dog in her arms. In Julius Meyer Grief's Encyclopedia of Modern Art, it is revealed that besides Alain Charago, the painting features the following individuals. Standing near the railing is Alphonse Fournay's Jr., the son of the boat owner. His sister, Louise Alphonsin Fournay's, wearing a straw hat, engages in conversation with Baron Raoul Barbier, a seated man attired in a brown suit and hat. Towards the rear of the boat stands a man dressed in a top hat and a black suit. This person is Charles Ifrassi, an art collector and the editor of the Gazette de Beaux-Arts. Opposite Ifrassi is Zilla Fogg, Ifrassi's personal secretary, who appears more casually dressed in a brown coat and hat. The seated young woman sipping from a glass is the actress Ellen André. Interestingly, Ellen André also served as the primary model for Degas painting, Labsant. Behind Ifrassi, we can observe two of Renoir's close friends, Eugène Pierre Lestranger and Paul Lote engaged in flirtatious behavior with the actress Jeanne Sommerie. On the right side, a man seated at the table wearing a white shirt and a straw hat is the painter Gustave Caibort. Adjacent to Caibort, we find the actress Angèle Legault, while a standing man leaning towards them is the Italian journalist Adrian Maggiolo. This painting showcases notable advancements in Renoir's technique. Similar to Moulin de Lagalette, it portrays a joyful moment set on the outskirts rather than within the city. The depiction of the human figures is particularly intriguing. In contrast to Moulin de Lagalette, where facial outlines appeared more indistinct, the shapes here are clear and three-dimensional. The figures possess stability and volume, exemplified by the well-defined arms of the two men. The balcony area, where most of the figures are gathered, provides a view of the lush greenery, 
the sparkling water of the Seine River, and the sailboats in the distance. The inclusion of the natural landscape adds a sense of tranquility and escape from the bustling city. The composition captivates with its vibrant colors and its ability to depict the effects of natural light and atmosphere. Notably, the orange hues accentuate the attire, hats, and the gently fluttering awning. Overall, the painting portrays a joyous gathering of people engaged in conversation, drinking, flirting, and thoroughly enjoying this beautiful moment. The painting is considered a masterpiece of Impressionism, embodying the movement's core principles of capturing the transient effects of light and color, as well as celebrating the simple pleasures of leisure and human interaction. Camille Pissarro Camille Pissarro, 1830-1903, was a painter of Danish-French descent who made a significant impact to the Impressionism and Neo-Impressionism movements. Originally from the island of St. Thomas, which is now part of the Virgin Islands, Pissarro was sent to a boarding school in France by his merchant father, with the intention that he would eventually join the family business. During his time in Paris, Pissarro pursued his passion for painting and enrolled at the School of Fine Arts and the Swiss Academy. It was there that he had the privilege of being taught by renowned artists such as Gustave Courbet, Camille Corro, and Jean-Francois Millet. One of Pissarro's notable teachers, Corro, encouraged him to leave the studio and paint on plein air. Embracing this advice, Pissarro created remarkable artworks depicting landscapes, the rural life of peasants, and the vibrant motion and bustle of Parisian boulevards. His paintings captured the essence of these scenes through vivid combinations of colors and shapes. Pissarro was known for his dedication to depicting the changing seasons and the effects of light and atmosphere on the natural world. He would often revisit the same locations multiple times, capturing the nuances and transformations brought about by different weather conditions and times of day. Pissarro's artistic journey led him to cross paths with fellow painters Auguste Renoir, Claude Monet, Alfred Sisley, and Edouard Manet. They became friends and participated together in Impressionist exhibitions. Beyond his involvement with the Impressionist circle, Pissarro also collaborated with Neo-Impressionist painters like George Seurat and Paul Signoc, further expanding his artistic horizons. Camille Pissarro's work had a profound impact on prominent Neo-Impressionists, including Cézanne, Seurat, Gauguin, and Vincent van Gogh. Their artistic styles and techniques were greatly influenced by Pissarro's contributions to the art world. Camille Pissarro Italian Boulevard, Sunlight The painting, created in 1897, is currently housed at the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C. Similar to Monet, Pissarro produced a series of paintings portraying a specific theme or landscape at various times of the day and in different weather conditions. This particular artwork portrays a view of the Paris Italian Boulevard, as seen from a window at the Grand Hotel de Russie. Pissarro, known for his interest in urban scenes, presents the street of a modern city with a primary focus on the effects of sunlight. Within the painting, Pissarro depicts individuals engaged in their daily routines along the boulevard. Pedestrians leisurely walk, shoppers carry out their activities, and horse-drawn wagons traverse the road. The figures are rendered in an impressionistic style, with minimal details, as Pissarro prioritizes capturing the overall ambience and movement of the scene. The individuals on the sidewalks and on the wagons are not discernible, lacking identifiable features, 
and even their clothing seems uniform. The sun's rays permeate the composition, illuminating the boulevard and casting delicate shadows on the ground. Pissarro adeptly captures the fleeting nature of light and the interplay between light and shadow. The grandeur of Paris-wide avenues is further enhanced by the exquisite architectural structures, which, combined with the bustling human activity, accentuate the energy and dynamism of the modern city. Gustave Caillebaut Gustave Caillebaut, 1848-1894, was a French painter, born in Paris from a wealthy family. His father served as a judge and was also the inheritor of the family's military textile business. Although Caillebaut initially pursued studies in law and engineering, he eventually decided to embark on a career as a painter. During his time at the School of Fine Arts in Paris, Caillebaut became friends with other notable Impressionist painters, including Monet, Sisley, Degas, and Renoir. Benefiting from his family's fortune, Caillebaut generously financed Impressionist exhibitions and supported his fellow painters by purchasing their artworks. Similar to his contemporaries in the Impressionist movement, Caillebaut found great fascination in the industrialization and modernization of Paris, and the profound impact these changes had on the city's inhabitants. His artistic creations vividly captured this new, modern lifestyle found within urban environments. While often described as an impressionist, Caillebaut's works align more closely with the realism movement. His paintings exhibit discernible shapes, portraying people and objects with volume and stability, in contrast to the loose brushstrokes commonly associated with Impressionism. Nonetheless, he shared a common subject matter with the Impressionists, frequently depicting scenes from everyday life in both urban and rural settings. Dedicating his life to painting, Caillebaut also amassed a substantial collection of Impressionist and Realist paintings, which he ultimately bequeathed to the French state. Gustave Caillebaut The Floor Scrapers The painting was made in 1875 and currently resides at the Orsay Museum, in Paris. The artwork depicts a scene of three laborers engaged in the meticulous task of removing old varnish and scraping a parquet floor in an apartment in Paris. Notably, the workers are portrayed with nude torsos, emphasizing their physicality and the demanding nature of their work. Caillebaut's attention to detail is evident in the depiction of their muscular bodies and the accurate representation of the tools and materials employed in the process, adding realism and authenticity of the scene. Unlike some of his contemporaries, such as Jean-Francois Millet and Gustave Courbet, who often portrayed laborers with a sense of dignity and respect, Caillebaut did not seek to convey a particular social or political message in this painting. Instead, his primary focus was on capturing the interplay of light as it filters through a nearby window, illuminating the figures and the floor. This interplay creates a dynamic contrast between the warm tones on the workers' bodies and the cool hues of the floor, heightening the visual impact of the composition. When the floor scrapers was initially exhibited in 1875, it faced criticism from art critics who considered it inferior and lacking deeper social meaning. However, over time, the painting gained recognition and is now considered one of Caillebaut's most accomplished works. It is admired for its technical precision, composition, and the artist's ability to capture the atmosphere and essence of everyday life in 19th-century Paris. Gustave Caillebaut Europe Bridge This painting, created in 1876, 
can be found at the Petit Palais Museum in Geneva, Switzerland. This particular artwork showcases Kybort's fascination with the technological advancements of the era and his keen interest in capturing the essence of contemporary city life. It portrays a metal bridge that serves as the central element of the composition. The bridge connects six major roads, with each road named after a European capital. At the top of the bridge, a young man, accompanied by his dog, is gazing at the railway lines of the Saint-Lazare station, while a bit further away, people can be seen strolling along the bridge. The painting beautifully captures the dynamic energy of city life as pedestrians traverse the bridge, emphasizing the vibrancy of city life. Kaibort deliberately highlights the bridge's size and place within the artwork, exemplifying his interest with the progress of technology and the transformation of the cityscape. Kaibort skillfully directs the viewer's gaze through the painting, leading from the foreground figures to the expansive metal bridge and the distant landscape. The careful placement of figures and attention to perspective create a sense of depth and movement within the artwork. This unique blend of realism and impressionistic elements showcases Kaibort's individual artistic vision. While he uses loose brushwork, Kaibort showcases his meticulous precision to detail and captures the effects of light and shadow. The shadows cast by the bridge, the dog, and the passers-by, as well as the bright light permeating the entire scene, contribute to the overall atmosphere of the painting. Gustave Kaibort Paris Street, Rainy Day This particular artwork, created in 1877, is currently housed in the Art Institute of Chicago. It is considered one of the artist's masterpieces. The artwork, transports viewers to Dublin Square a location in the northern part of Paris and depicts a rainy day, immersing the viewer in the atmosphere and ambience of the city streets. The painting portrays a bustling city street, characterized by a wet cobblestone road reflecting the somber grey sky above. The use of loose brushwork and soft, muted colors contributes to the overall impressionistic style of the piece. Upon closer examination, the artwork is divided both horizontally and vertically. The green lamp post serves as a horizontal division, separating the painting into two halves. Meanwhile, the buildings and the cobbled street create a vertical division providing a sense of structure and organization. Within the composition, a variety of figures can be observed. In the foreground, a well-dressed couple, seemingly belonging to the upper class, catches the viewer's attention. They are depicted walking arm in arm with their stylish attire and fashionable umbrellas. Behind them, slightly obscured, are other figures representing the working class. Notable among them is a maid opening her umbrella and a man carrying a ladder, adding a touch of everyday life to the scene. Another feature is Kaibort's ability to depict the effects of light and reflection on various surfaces. The artist's skillful rendering of the wet pavement and the way light interacts with the surroundings adds depth and realism to the painting. This attention to light and its nuances showcases Kaibort's understanding of the principles of Impressionism and his ability to capture the transient nature of light and weather conditions. Kaibort's choice to depict individuals from different social classes in the same cityscape emphasizes the modern and diverse of urban life. The artist finds inspiration in the art of photography and captures a snapshot of Paris during the late 19th century, showcasing the intermingling of people from various backgrounds and walks of life. It portrays a moment frozen in time, 
depicting the city as a vibrant crossroad where the middle class and working class converge. The presence of both upper class figures and working class individuals conveys a sense of the city as a melting pot, where people from diverse backgrounds coexist and intersect. The painting's attention to detail and the artist's precise portrayal of light, shadow, and weather conditions contribute to its significance as a masterpiece of Impressionism. Edgar Degas Edgar Degas, 1834-1917, was a notable French painter, sculptor and engraver. Alongside his artistic endeavors, Degas also explored amateur photography and developed a fondness for Japanese engravings. Despite being born into a wealthy family with a banker father, Degas diverged from pursuing law studies and instead followed his true passion by enrolling in the School of Fine Arts to study painting under the guidance of Louis Lamith. His initial aspiration was to become a historical painter, and he held great admiration for the neoclassical painters Angra and Delacroix. During the early stages of his career, Degas embarked on a journey to Italy, where he drew inspiration from the Renaissance painters Michelangelo, Raphael, and Titian. This exposure to classical art enabled him to develop a keen understanding of human anatomy, evident in his nude and figure drawings. Degas had a deep fascination with capturing movement in his artworks. He strove to depict not just the physical form of his subjects but also their dynamic and fleeting gestures. This fascination is especially evident in his ballet-themed works, where he sought to convey the grace, effort, and intensity of the dancer's movements. In his paintings, Degas captured young girls dressed in delicate tulle skirts, striving for perfection in their movements. These works showcased the ballerinas in various postures, depicting them dancing, resting, or stretching. Influenced by his observations of ballet rehearsals, Degas skillfully incorporated the effects of photography and Japanese engravings into his depictions of ballerinas. The artist also focused on portraying ordinary, everyday life. He depicted the portraits of friends, family, fellow artists, musicians and notable figures of the time. He depicted scenes from cafes and working-class individuals, offering a glimpse into the lives of common people in 19th-century Paris. Degas's acquaintance with Édouard Manet played a pivotal role in his discovery of the methods and techniques associated with the Impressionist movement. However, Degas diverged from his fellow Impressionist painters in his approach to depicting subjects. Unlike them, he preferred indoor settings over outdoor landscapes. Nonetheless, his works exhibited the influence of Impressionism through his vibrant color palette, mastery of light and shadow, and the ability to capture a fleeting moment, akin to a photographer's snapshot. Edgar Degas. The Bellely Family. The painting, located at the Orsay Museum in Paris, was created in 1858. It is considered one of Degas' most significant early works and a remarkable example of his skill in portraiture. The painting depicts the Bellely family, who were Degas' relatives and resided in Italy. The composition centers around Degas' aunt, Laura Bellelli, who is shown in the foreground dressed entirely in black, signifying her mourning attire. The mourning attire suggests the recent loss of her father, further emphasized by the presence of his portrait on the wall behind her. On the left the eldest daughter Giovanna Bellelli, gazes out at the viewer with a reserved and serious expression. Positioned in the center of the composition is Laura's younger daughter, Giulia Bellelli, 
who exudes a more playful and confident appearance as she sits in a chair. Behind them, Laura's husband, Baron Gennaro Bellelli, is seen with his back turned away from the viewer, seemingly absorbed in his own thoughts and distant from the rest of the family. The painting is characterized by Degas' attention to detail and his exploration of structure. Influenced by Italian art, particularly the Renaissance masters, Degas used geometric precision in arranging the figures and objects within the painting. The use of light and shade further enhances the three-dimensional effect and lends a sense of depth to the composition. The Bellelli family showcases Dega's ability to convey on the canvas the complex emotions and the psychological state of the individuals. Through subtle gestures, expressions, and body language, he conveys the complex dynamics and tensions within the Bellelli family. Dega captures this feeling of isolation and lack of communication among the family members. There is a palpable sense of alienation among the individuals portrayed, evident in the distant expressions of the girl's mother and the father's posture. Each person occupies their own space within the painting, without any visible communication between them. Edgar Degas The Ballet Class This renowned artwork, housed in the Orsay Museum, Paris, was created between 1871 and 1874. It holds a prominent place among the artist's most celebrated works. The painting captures a ballet lesson conducted by Zilpa Rowe, a distinguished master from the Opera of Paris. Degas' attention to detail is evident in his depiction of the dancers. He portrays their unique postures, showcasing the physicality and elegance of their movements. Each dancer is rendered with individuality, creating a sense of life and energy within the composition. Degas' distinctive style can be seen in the various postures of the ballerinas depicted in the composition. Positioned at the edge of the image, two dancers draw attention. One is seated atop the piano, finding relief by scratching her back, while the other stands upright, holding a fan and attentively observing the events unfolding in the ballroom, keeping a close eye on the ballet instructor. On the opposite side of the room, a young girl playfully toys with a black ribbon adorning her neck. Some dancers are seated, taking a moment to rest, while a few remain fully engaged in the teacher's lesson. At the back of the painting, female figures come into view, possibly the mothers of the ballerinas, some conversing, while others keenly observe the ballet class. The composition conveys a sense of depth, reminiscent of photographic techniques, aided by a spacious doorway leading to the adjoining room. A tall window in that room bathes the scene in natural light, further enhancing the depth and atmosphere. Moreover, the artist highlights the composition with unrelated details. While the focus is on the ballet class, Dega incorporates subtle elements that contribute to the narrative and atmosphere of the painting. A silhouette of a cello against the window suggests the accompaniment of music. The inclusion of a small dog near the foreground adds a touch of charm and intimacy. The ballet class also reveals Degas' fascination with the interplay of light and color. The painting features a harmonious blend of warm and cool tones, creating a vibrant and visually engaging composition. The interplay of light and shadows adds depth and dimension to the scene, enhancing the overall atmosphere and guiding the viewer in the ballet studio. The artwork showcases Degas' ability to capture the essence of movement and human interaction. Through his technique Degas depicted the grace, discipline, and beauty of ballet. Edgar Degas The Orchestra at the Opera 
The Orsay Museum in Paris houses this painting created in 1870. Degas offers a glimpse into the world of music and performance during the 19th century. The artwork portrays an orchestra situated slightly below the opera stage. Interestingly, the musicians depicted in the painting were also friends of the artist. By choosing to portray his musician friends, Degas adds a personal touch and gives the painting a sense of authenticity. In the forefront of the composition stands Desiree D.O., a bassoon player and a close friend of Degas. Positioned behind him is Louis-Marie Pelet, the cellist. The flute player is Joseph Henri Altus, while the violinist is Zephyrin Joseph Lancien. Achille Henri Victor Gouffet, the seated musician with his back to the audience, plays the double bass. Degas portrays each musician with precision, capturing their facial expressions, postures, and the intricate details of their instruments. Degas' primary focus in this painting is the musicians themselves. He captures their concentration, dedication, and passion for their craft, emphasizing their role in bringing the music to life. In the background, seated in a theater box, is the esteemed composer Emmanuel Chabrier. This edition gives depth and context to the painting. Degas skillfully captures the focused expressions of the musicians as they concentrate on their instruments. Above the orchestra, the viewer can make out the feet and dresses of the dancers, although these details are not rendered with the same level of precision as the foreground musicians. The dancers occupy the second level of the composition, and the artist, much like a photographer, doesn't hesitate to crop the heads of the stage's main characters. This deliberate technique guides the viewer's gaze towards the musicians, highlighting their significance and capturing their intense focus on their instruments. As an impressionist artist, Degas incorporated some characteristic elements into the painting. He utilized loose brushwork, capturing the essence of the scene rather than focusing on details. The play of light and shadow is also evident, creating a sense of atmosphere and movement within the composition. Edgar Degas the Absinthe Drinker. The painting was made in 1876 and is located at the Orsay Museum, in Paris. Its central theme revolves around the emotions of solitude and isolation, as depicted by two individuals seated together within a Parisian café. The painting showcases Ellen André, a renowned actress and model, alongside Marceline de Bhutan, an actor and engraver, who were both chosen as the subjects for this composition. Degas effectively portrays the individual's melancholic state as they sit before a glass of absinthe, a readily available and inexpensive beverage. Absinthe, often resorted to as a desperate escape from frustration and loneliness, adds to the somber atmosphere. Notably, the artist masterfully captures the profound sadness evident in the girl's vacant gaze. Despite their physical proximity, the two figures remain uncommunicative, each confined to their individual sense of loneliness. Degas' intention in depicting this artwork is not to romanticize or glorify the moment. Rather, the painting serves as a poignant commentary on the detrimental effects of addiction and the disconnection from society that often accompanies it. To amplify the feelings of solitude and isolation, Degas skillfully employs a color palette dominated by shades of black, brown, creamy white, pale yellow, and green, the latter representing the color of the drink. This choice enhances the painting's somber mood and reinforces the association with the green hue of absinthe. The glass of absinthe in the foreground serves as a potent symbol in the painting. It represents not only the drink itself but also the psychological and social implications associated with it. 
the absinthe drinker reflects the darker aspects of urban life during the late 19th century. The painting can be interpreted as a commentary on the social issues of addiction, isolation, and alienation. It sheds light on the struggles faced by individuals in the urban environment, where the pursuit of momentary solace often leads to deeper despair and disconnection from society. James Abbott McNeil Whistler James Abbott McNeil Whistler, 1834-1903, was an American painter who spent the entirety of his adult life in Europe, residing first in France and later in England. While he was in America, Whistler enrolled to the United States Military Academy at West Point in 1851, following family tradition. However, he soon realized his disinterest in pursuing a military career and subsequently departed for Paris in 1855. During his time in Paris, Whistler had the privilege of studying drawing under the guidance of Mark Charles Gabriel Glier, a renowned Swiss painter, who had a profound influence on his artistic style. Whistler's artistic vision evolved over time, leading him to develop a distinctive style characterized by delicate brushwork, muted color palettes, and an emphasis on harmony and composition. Whistler's artistic style diverged from that of the Impressionists, as he placed a greater emphasis on subtle formations rather than the effects of light and color. In 1863, he exhibited his paintings alongside Manet at the Salon of the Rejected. His affinity with the Impressionists stemmed from his disdain for traditional academic subjects. Whistler firmly believed that the subject matter of a painting held little significance in comparison to how it was conveyed through shapes and colors. His belief in the importance of these aesthetic elements led him to experiment with various painting genres, including landscapes, portraits, and interiors. To capture the essence of musical harmony in his creations, Whistler titled many of his paintings as arrangements, harmonies, and nocturnes. Among his most renowned works is the arrangement in grey and black number no. one, famously known as Whistler's Mother. A distinct characteristic of Whistler's art is his signature, which takes the form of a butterfly with an elongated stinger. This detail can be observed upon close examination of his paintings. Whistler's art influenced generations of artists and contributed to the development of modern art movements. James Abbott McNeil Whistler Arrangement in Grey and Black No. 1 Arrangement in Grey and Black No. 1, popularly known as Whistler's Mother, is an iconic painting by James McNeil Whistler created in 1871. The painting currently resides in the Orsay Museum, in Paris. This masterpiece portrays the artist's mother, Anna McNeil Whistler, who served as the model for this portrait, while she lived in London with her son. The artwork showcases a distinct two-dimensional style, indicating the artist's inspiration from Japanese prints. Mrs. Whistler is portrayed seated on a wooden chair, in a straightforward and rigid profile, wearing a black dress and clutching a white lace handkerchief. The composition demonstrates careful balance, with the figure positioned centrally and frontally. In addition to Mrs. Whistler, who occupies the central position in the artwork, the painting features a depiction of the Thames River hanging on a grey wall, along with a black-grey curtain embellished with white and yellow elements. Whistler uses a limited colour palette, primarily consisting of various shades of grey and black, highlighting Whistler's mastery of tonal harmonies and exploration of light and shadow relationships. Notably, the shades of grey and black pervade the woman's hair, dress, 
the wall, and other elements of the painting, creating a symbol of maternal love and dignity. The artist emphasized the importance of harmony and composition in art. He believed in the art for art's sake movement and sought to create works that appealed to the viewer's aesthetic sensibilities rather than conveying specific narratives or messages. Whistler's Mother is an influential artwork that has been widely reproduced and referenced in popular culture, including advertisements, cartoons, and films. This masterpiece inspired generations of artists to experiment with simplifying forms, exploring tonal relationships, and focusing on capturing the essence and emotion of their subjects. James Abbott McNeil Whistler Symphony in White No. 1, The White Girl This painting, located at the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C., was created between 1861 and 1862. Symphony in White No. 1, The White Girl is part of a series of three paintings by Whistler known as the Symphonies in White. Each painting in the series explores variations of white as the dominant color and features a female figure as the central subject. The other two paintings are, Symphony in White No. 2, The Little White Girl and Symphony in White No. 3. This full-size portrait is featuring Joanna Hiffenen, the artist's mistress and model. Hiffenen is depicted with her long red hair flowing freely, dressed in a white gown, and positioned in front of a white curtain. In the painting, Hiffenen holds white lilies, which symbolize innocence and purity. Her poised stance conveys a sense of tranquility and contemplation, as she stands upon a wolf skin that exudes a fierce and aggressive presence, contrasting with the girl's expression. Colorful flowers can be seen discarded on the floor near her feet. Initially rejected by the Paris Salon, the artwork found acceptance at the Salon of the Rejected in 1863, where Edouard Manet also showcased his renowned work, The Luncheon on the Grass. The composition of the painting is primarily dominated by white, creating a sense of harmony. Its simplicity is noteworthy prompting art critics to interpret it as an allegory of innocence, akin to the Virgin Mary. However, Whistler's intention with this portrait was not to convey a hidden message. Rather, it portrays a beautiful young woman elegantly dressed in white, positioned before a white curtain. His artistic approach was influenced by Japanese art, inspiring him to simplify forms and eliminate unnecessary details. The artist invites the viewer to observe the thick brushstrokes of white paint, the texture and tonal contrasts. Whistler embraced the philosophy of art for art's sake, focusing on the aesthetics and visual experience over specific messages or morals. Whistler's innovative approach to composition had a profound impact on the art world and contributed to the broader shift towards a more abstract and subjective interpretation of art.